Coming up on today's show, Georgia, they held their championship celebration and parade over the weekend. We'll let you hear what Kirby Smart had to say to Dog Nation. Plenty of news from both Alabama and Georgia players as they announce who's going pro, who's coming back, and who's hitting the transfer portal. Also, we'll take a look at Dennis Dodd's way too early top 25 for next football season. And we'll recap the SEC Hoops action from over the weekend as we have some surprise teams getting it done this year. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. Great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with the Sonos Arc, the premium smart soundbar for TV, movies, music, gaming, and more. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. I am Chris Gordy. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Plenty to get into. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Takes the handoff. What a catch. Around the conference. And we start over at Georgia as Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs made your weight lifted off their backs this past week, claiming the school's first football title since 1980, beating Alabama in that game. And they are still celebrating over in Athens on Saturday. The Bulldogs celebrated the title and the winning coach took to the podium, podium to speak. Kirby Smart thanked his players for all the hard work they did before the season even started. He also thanked the school's administration and the Georgia fan base for the support that they have received. Our buddy Reggie Chapman, who joined us on the show last week, he works with 11 Alive News in Atlanta, and he was there. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome inside Sanford Stadium following a celebration for the ages. 41 years in the making, the Georgia Bulldogs, your 2021 national champions, and the crowd they had on hand was fitting considering just how big this moment was for not just this city, but this entire state. Over 90,000 people inside the stands celebrating a national championship, and they had plenty to cheer about the entire day. Success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Henry David Thoreau, that embodies this team. They, they, they never embraced the success. You know what they kept doing? They just kept chopping wood. They just kept chopping wood. We're burning the boats, baby, and we're coming back. Go dogs. This is a workout we did. I'm, I'm pretty sure all these guys, it's, it's burning all their heads up. So we started, we were on this side of the stadium right here. We started at the bottom. We ran to the top, and we did that 15 times. Uh, 15 times for 15 games. And sure enough, we won every one of them. I just want to say, Dog Nation, look what we built. I love you all. Uh, go Dawgs and this Georgia Boy Show is happy to be here. Every guy that you see right here, every guy that you see on the sidelines from the past years that helped lead us and build this foundation, we knew we had something special and we couldn't leave just then. I called my brother Vontae and I was like, Vontae, we coming back? We going to do this? He was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, shoot, let's do it then. So he ran it back. <laughs> One last time, let's hit it for him. Go! I think my favorite moment from this entire event was Jordan Davis's speech, specifically at the end. It's no secret that he's a fan favorite, but he became even more of a legend after saying go dogs and then go Braves, revealing a Braves jersey underneath his sweatshirt. That's the lasting memory that he'll leave for these Georgia fan base as he heads to the NFL. All right, that's it for sports. Thanks for watching. One we'll more news after this commercial break. And again, our buddy Reggie Chapman from 11 Alive News. Thanks to him. Now, we got to get to the transfer portal. Plenty of stuff to get into. And we start over at Alabama as Jaleel Billingsley, the former Alabama tight end. We know he entered the transfer portal a few days ago. We now know where he is going. His dad posted on social media that he is committed to transfer to play for Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns. Billingsley caught 17 passes this year for 256 yards and three touchdowns. He had 18 catches for almost 300 yards with three touchdowns in 2020 when Steve Sarkeesian was calling the plays for him. 
Meanwhile, another Alabama player, Drew Sanders, took some big snaps for Alabama throughout this season. But on Sunday, he announced he is staying in the SEC West. He will be headed to Fayetteville to join Coach Sam Pittman and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Drew Sanders had 24 tackles, one sack, and two pass breakups for the Tide defense this year. We're going to have to put together a running list of all the guys were transferred from one SEC school to another. As you know that there is going to be some bad blood around. Speaking of that, former Georgia DB Jalen Kimber, he entered the transfer portal after the Bulldogs won the national title. He announced on Saturday he is committed to the Florida Gators. He tweeted out the last two years at Georgia have been great, bringing the national championship back to Athens. Dog Nation, I appreciate you accepting me, and I'm happy the Natty has returned there. But now he is going to be a Florida Gator. This past year, Kimber appeared in one game, recording one tackle. In two years of Georgia, he's recorded a total of three tackles. So that didn't get much playing time in Athens, but he will uh, look to earn some playing time in the swamp. Meanwhile, Justin Robinson, he's fresh off winning the title with the Georgia Bulldogs. The wide receiver entered the portal. He is keeping it in the SEC. He revealed over the weekend he has committed to the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Robinson had two catches for 18 yards and a touchdown for Georgia this year. So he will jump into Mike Leach's air raid system. We'll see what he can do. On Sunday, Auburn landed a DB commitment for a uh, transfer from Oregon. DJ James, who's an Alabama native, announced on Sunday that he is committed to Brian Harson. He recorded 46 tackles and two interceptions playing for Oregon this past year. So a nice pickup there for Auburn. However, uh, on three sports reporting that former Auburn four-star D lineman Lee Hunter, who just finished his freshman year on the Plains, he will enter into the transfer portal. Florida tight end Kamari Gamble. We know he put his name into the transfer portal. And after five seasons at Florida, he will use his extra season at UCF. Homer Gator tight end confirmed. His transfer commitment after posting photos from his Orlando campus visit. Former Auburn head coach Gus Malzahn keeps picking up, plucking away SEC players. He's now picked up Auburn wide receiver Kobe Hudson, Ole Miss quarterback John Rice Plumley, Kentucky linebacker Katie McDaniel, and now Florida tight end Kamari Gamble. You remember a year ago when he left for UCF, he took Big Cat Bryant with him. So uh, we'll see if he continues to look at stealing any guys from the SEC, bringing them over to UCF. Over at LSU, West Weeks, a freshman linebacker at Virginia this past season. He has committed to transfer over to LSU. Weeks was a three-star prospect. In 11 games, he made 31 tackles with a sack and five pass breakups. Suffered a broken leg during the uh, Virginia's regular season finale against Virginia Tech, so don't know if he'll be ready for spring practice, but Another pickup there for Brian Kelly. On Friday, Louisiana transfer wide receiver Kyron Lacey announced he is heading to LSU. He led uh, Louisiana Lafayette with a team-leading six touchdowns last season. So Brian Kelly's staff making good use of the transfer portal. So far, they've added Arkansas DBs Joe Fouché and Greg Brooks, Penn State running back Noah Kane, uh, Louisiana DB Makai Gardner, Louisiana wide receiver Kyron Lacey, and West Virginia linebacker West Weeks. Whew. Over at Tennessee, after entering the transfer portal, we now know where Karon Calvert is heading. The former Tennessee offensive lineman announced his commitment to Eastern Kentucky. He did graduate from the Vols in December 2021 with an undergrad degree in communication studies. So he will suit up for a sixth season as a redshirt super senior. We all over at Ole Miss, Henry Parrish. Their uh, run, third string running back announced uh, he has entered the transfer portal, and now we know where he's going. He will follow his former Ole Miss running backs coach, Kevin Smith, to Miami. Henry Parrish will be a Miami Hurricane. Uh, another guy leaving Georgia, Lavoisier Carroll. Uh, he has entered the transfer portal, was a four-star recruit as a running back, switched to defensive back in the spring, played in four games, made three tackles in the Charleston Southern game for Georgia. Kalen Newton, the younger brother of Cam Newton, is reportedly in the transfer portal after two seasons at Auburn. He was listed as a wide receiver this year, played in 21 games over the last two seasons for Auburn, mostly on special teams. He did block a punt that helped Auburn defeat Georgia State this season. 
Uh, over at Ole Miss, DB Jalen Jordan has announced he will continue his career at South Alabama. And great grandson of the late Bear Bryant, quarterback Paul Tyson, he announced he was leaving Alabama. He is heading to Arizona State. So there you go. Your latest update on the transfer portal. Now, guys, coming back for the Georgia Bulldogs, DB Tyke Smith, who suffered a torn ACL in October. Ooh. After he previously missed time following a preseason injury, he will be, be coming back next season. Smith only appeared in the Vanderbilt and Auburn games and made five tackles on the season. He will join William Poole and Chris Smith on the very early edition of the Georgia depth chart. Now, over at Alabama, tons of guys over with the Tide that are coming back. We start with... Emil Ekior, the offensive lineman after four years in Tuscaloosa, the junior lineman, will make it five years. He said, uh, I'm ready to run it back for one more season in Tuscaloosa to handle unfinished business. He's played in 33 games over the last three seasons. Jordan Battle picked up first team all SEC recognition in his third season in Alabama. He is coming back in the secondary for Bama. Henry Toa Toa, Alabama's leading tackler this past season, 112 tackles. Former Tennessee Vol, who came over to Bama to try to win a title, he announced on social media he is home now uh, for the Tennessee transfer. He says, uh, put God first, and Bama's been a place that has welcomed him with open arms. He is coming back for another season. That is a big get for that Alabama defense. In addition, DJ Dale, the big run stuffer up front, he's coming back. And DeMarco Hellams, another part of that Alabama defense is coming back so those are some big pieces for the tide and all those guys cited the job is not done yet unfinished business yeah they've got uh, revenge on their mind and look playing at alabama chances are you'll probably be back in a title game very soon over florida brenton cox one of their big uh, pass rushers uh he announced he is coming back for another season he wrote that uh, he will return to florida and not enter the draft he led the gators in both sacks with eight and a half and tackles for a loss with 14 and a half and over at Kentucky Tyrell Asian uh, announced he is coming back for another season it's a big get for Kentucky's defense which is also getting DeAndre Square back as well Asian appeared in 12 games making 46 uh, tackles recorded an interception uh, which he returned 95 yards for a touchdown good news for Arkansas as quarterback Malik Hornsby has reportedly withdrawn his name from the transfer portal. Hornsby uh, has been KJ Jefferson's backup. He entered the portal just a week ago, and it's been with the Razorbacks two seasons. He surprised fans entering the portal, but now he has pulled out, and he's staying at Arkansas. Meanwhile, guys going pro. There is a laundry list of Alabama and Georgia guys that are going pro. Let's start with Alabama. Jalen Armour Davis is going pro after four seasons at Alabama. John Mechie, the junior Alabama wide receiver, signed with an agent. He's heading to the pros. Other Alabama guys include Evan Neal, Jamison Williams, Slade Bolden, Vidarian Mathis, Josh Job, Christopher Allen, and Chris Owens, all Alabama guys heading into this year's draft. For Georgia, it was a busy weekend of announcements. Uh, running back Zamir White got the announcement started on Friday. Of course, he followed fellow running back James Cook. And then you heard a lot of other guys specifically on that defense announce over the weekend. DB's Lewis Seen and Darian Kendrick, both jumping for the pros. N'Kobe Dean, of course, the uh, Butt Kiss Award winner. He's going pro. Trevon Walker, he announced he's going pro. He expects to climb up draft boards. And then offensively, Jamari Salyer and wide receiver George Pickens all heading to the pros. So a lot of big names there for Georgia all heading uh, to the next level. At Auburn, their linebacker Chandler Wooten uh, became a star this year for them. He's capitalizing, capitalizing off of a big season. He will go to the pros. And there you have it. Those are your guys going pro. Some other notes real quick. Tennessee has added an opponent to their 2025 schedule. They already had their season opener against Syracuse in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. They will now host the UAB Blazers in 2025. Some coaching news. LSU and Brian Kelly are hiring Georgia's Cortez Hankton as their next wide receivers coach. Hankton is a Louisiana native and former NFL wide receiver. He's been at Georgia since 2018, also served as Georgia's passing game coordinator. Very familiar recruiting across Louisiana. He issued a farewell letter thanking Kirby Smart and the rest of the guys there. Billy Napier, he's reportedly hired his D-line coach, Sean Spencer, 
expected to be the next D-line coach at Florida. Recently been hired by Duke. Spent the last two years with the New York Giants. Has experience at Penn State and Vanderbilt. And lastly, Auburn making a big addition to their off-field support staff. The Tigers are adding J.C. Sherritt, a former CFL player, and current FCS defensive coordinator over at Cal Poly. And there you have it. That is around the conference. Plenty of stuff to to recap from over the weekend. Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. When we return, Dennis Dodds, way too early, top 25 ahead of the 2022 season. That is coming your way next. It is the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. And if yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, you need to make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the best protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. It is covered in 100% real chocolate. Many Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams sugar, 4 grams net carbs, 17 grams of protein packed in there. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious Built Bar, you can almost count it as a workout. So many delicious flavors from the raspberry to cookies and cream, salted caramel, tons of different flavors. You need to go check them out over at their website at Built.com, B-U-I-L-T.com. Make sure you use our promo code LOCK15. You will get 15% off your first order. Again, use promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your order at Built.com. along here locked on sec and look we're just now heading into the football offseason and a lot of people putting out their early early looks at preseason college football rankings for the 2022 season so i figured why not take a look at dennis dodd from cbs sports he tends to know a thing or two about college football so let's take a look at dennis dodd's Way too early top 25 rankings ahead of the 2022 season and where he has the teams from the SEC. And we start, he's got Alabama, number one. He says Alabama is the runaway number one for obvious reasons. It has most of its best players back. Nick Saban has seven years to go on his contract. He said, how does this keep happening? Two years after losing six first-round picks, A season after playing for another national title, the Crimson Tide will be loaded yet again. For starters, Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young and Nagurski Award-winning linebacker Will Anderson are back. That's arguably the best offensive and best defensive player in the country. A new running back will have to emerge with the loss of Brian Robinson. Coming in at number three, he's got the Georgia Bulldogs, the defending champion dogs, He said, well, once again, play crushing defense. They always do under Kirby Smart. Some of the faces will change. It'll be interesting to see what happens at quarterback. Stetson Bennett, JT Daniels, transfer portal, or what? At least six starters should return on offense, including freshman All-American Brock Bowers. So might feel a little bit disrespectful there, but some questions with Georgia moving forward. Bama's got a lot of their questions already answered for next season. Rounding out the top five, he's got Texas A&M coming in at fifth. He says the nation's top recruiting class gives the Aggies a tailwind heading into next year. With true freshmen having more of an impact sooner, it will be fascinating to see who contributes first. Aggies will be drooling over their top quarterback signee, Connor Weigman. There has to be a hint of disappointment after beating Alabama and winning only eight games. And the SEC West is always difficult, but... Over at Texas A&M, he's got them number five. Number eight, this is a little bit of a surprise. He's got LSU number eight in his top 25 rankings. He said, ignore that fake accent dude from Massachusetts in the corner. Brian Kelly, the coach, is the real deal. If you told any program they could get the winningest coach in Notre Dame history, they would take it in a heartbeat. Brian Kelly has better access to the playoff now in the SEC, but he will have to work harder to get there. He's going to have to recruit. But uh, it's an interesting thought, and I've seen some people kind of thinking the same way. Brian Kelly has won everywhere he's been. Why would you not at least consider them uh, LSU to be a top 25 team next year? 
Again, he's got some more work to do in the transfer portal. Going to be a lot of new faces over at LSU. Rounding out the top 10, he's got Arkansas coming in at number 10. He says Sam Pittman continues to overachieve in Fayetteville. The nine wins in 2021 were the most since 2011. That's also the last time before 2021 the Razorbacks scored at least 30 points in five or more games. The offense loaded with K.J. Jefferson back, who had the most touchdown passes since Austin Allen in 2016. Cincinnati comes to Razorback Stadium to open the season. Arkansas, a preseason top 10 team, according to Dennis Dodd. Coming in at number 15, he's got the Tennessee Volunteers. He said Josh Heupel has assimilated quickly at UT. Seven wins look like a bright light at the end of a tunnel, and Hendon Hooker has Heisman hopes and a rocket arm that produced 31 touchdown passes this year. The defense has to get better, but if you look at their schedule, nine wins nine wins seems more than possible for the Vols next year. Tennessee as a way-too-early top-15 team heading into next season. His only other team from the SEC that he has ranked in the top 25, he's got South Carolina at number 22. He said Shane Beamer defied expectations, winning seven games in year one of his regime. But now you insert Spencer Rattler from the transfer portal, and the Gamecocks will be a legitimate upset threat in several SEC games. Expect eight wins as the upward tra trajectory continues. I agree. I love the additions that South Carolina has made in the transfer portal. I like their recruiting class. I think Shane Beamer and South Carolina are a team to watch in the East this year. I'd even argue 22 may be a little bit too low. Again, they got to prove it, but feel like the arrow pointing upward for Shane Beamer and South Carolina. Some omis omissions here for Dennis Dodd in his way too early preseason top 25. How about Kentucky, who ranked 15th in the final coaches poll? I mean, they've got Will Levis back. They lose Wondell Robinson. Chris Rodriguez is coming back. They got a lot of pieces coming back at Kentucky. Kind of curious he wouldn't have them ranked as a preseason top 25 team. Probably forgot about them. Another one, Ole Miss. Ranked 11th in the final coaches poll, yet not in Dennis Dodd's preseason top 25. I know Matt Corral is on the way out, and there's a question mark there at the quarterback spot. Will Jackson Dart from USC end up trans transferring in? We will see. But you know the offense is still going to be good. It's a Lane Kiffin offense. They're going to score points. Can the defense continue to improve like they did this year? We will see. But I would definitely put Ole Miss as a team that probably should have received more consideration for being a top 25 team heading into next season. And lastly, I kind of just threw Mississippi State in there. They were in the others receiving votes category in, the, in all the big polls prior to their bowl loss to Texas Tech. Um, you know, look, Mike Leach getting seven, eight wins. That offense is going to be dangerous. Will Rogers once again? Can the defense get better? Something to consider Mississippi State at least. You know, when you start to get in that 24, 25 range for preseason rankings next season. And there you have it. That's Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports, his uh, where the SEC teams rank in his way too early uh, preseason top 25 for 2022. Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, a quick recap of SEC Hoops action this past weekend. Bet Online would like to wish you guys a new betting year as we continue to march through the NFL playoffs. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year. They have a new updated desktop and mobile website. If you sign up today, you receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N. That'll get you started. From football to basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games, they got it all. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for this year. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online, it is where the game starts. Get in ahead of next week's NFL playoff games. <laughs> All right, final segment here on Locked On SEC. And just wanted to jump into a little recap of what we saw this past weekend in SEC Hoops action. And there were some really good games, some really big wins for some teams. And so before we uh, hop off, 
on into it. Let's uh, start in Oxford, where number four Auburn was facing a tough test after getting an emotional win at Alabama last week, then having to play at Ole Miss. Despite trailing by six at halftime, Auburn outscored the Rebels 42-27 to in the second half, and Auburn won it 80-71 to to improve to 16-1 and on the season, 5-0 and in the SEC. Walker Kessler led the way with 20 points and 10 rebounds. Jabari Smith, he had 15 points. Katie Johnson had 14. Auburn extended their win streak to 13 straight games. They shot 50% from the field. Ole Miss had won 10 of the 14 previous meetings between the two, so that was a big win for Auburn with a team that they seemed to struggle with. Meanwhile, number 18, Kentucky, they dismantled Tennessee at Rupp Arena, 107-79, to on a day where legendary SEC coach Joe B. Hall passed away at the age of 93, led Kentucky to its fourth national championship in 1978. He was very close with John Calipari, who paid tribute to his friend by holding a rolled-up program uh, while coaching the game. Freshman Ty Ty Washington scored a career-high 28 points. Severe Wheeler returned from his injury to add 21. And Kentucky shot a season-high 68% in front of a rocking crowd in Lexington. Kentucky improved to 14-3 and on the year, 4-1 and in the SEC. Tennessee, they fell to 2-3. and in the conference. Number 12, LSU really struggled down the stretch offensively against Arkansas on Saturday. They ended up losing 65-58. Jalen Williams for Arkansas hit a tie-breaking three-pointer with less than a minute to play. The Razorbacks ended the game on a 17-2 run in the final nine minutes. Arkansas coach Eric Musselman didn't even coach in the game. He was recovering from shoulder surgery And then assistant coach Keith Smart served as the interim head coach. He was a Baton Rouge native, so felt right at home there in Baton Rouge after dropping their first three SEC games. The Razorbacks have put together back-to-back wins against Mizzou and LSU, so they were right back in this thing. LSU, they had their 13-game home court win streak snapped. LSU now has two straight road games against ranked opponents in Alabama and Tennessee. LSU now 3-2, and Arkansas 2-3 and in the SEC. Alabama, they suffered yet another disappointing loss, falling at Mississippi State 78-76. to Anderson Garcia made a free throw with under four seconds left, and Iverson Molinar had a game-high 24 points for the Bulldogs. Keon Ellis missed a long three-pointer just before the buzzer. Jaden Shackelford led Alabama with 17 points. Bulldogs beat the Tide for the fourth time in the last five meetings in Starkville. The Tide have now lost three in a row, while well, Mississippi State is an impressive 12-4 and four overall, 3-1 and one in the SEC. So Alabama's got to figure out what is going on with them lately. The Red Hot Texas A&M Aggies, they remained undefeated in the SEC, going up to Mizzou, beating the Tigers 67-64. Henry Coleman led the way with 18 points. And the Aggies at 4-0 in the SEC will host Kentucky coming up this, this Wednesday. Should be a rocking atmosphere at Reed Arena. Mizzou's rough season just continues. They are now 7-9 overall, 1-3 in the conference. Florida, they finally got their first win in the SEC, beating South Carolina 71-63 on Saturday in Columbia. Flanders Fleming and uh, Kawasi Reeves both had 14 points, while Colin Castleton had 10 and 7. Both the Gators and Gamecocks now 1-3 in the SEC. And Georgia's rough season continues as they fell to Vanderbilt 73-66. Vandy ended a near eight-year drought beating Georgia on the road. Jordan Wright scored 20 points, grabbed 12 rebounds. Scottie Pippen Jr. scored 13. Vandy now 2-2 in the SEC. Georgia's 0-4, 5-12 overall on the season. And there you have it. That is your SEC Hoops Weekend Recap. That is just about going to do for me here, Chris Gordy, on Locked on SEC. Thanks again for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Check out the Locked on Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling. They'll give you all the picks you need. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll have some special guests joining us throughout this week to talk some more SEC as we dive deeper into the offseason that is SEC football. Crazy to think. A week ago today. It's the last college football game of the season. we got a long offseason ahead of us, a lot of transfer portal uh, news that will not stop. So we will continue to have roster movement throughout the season. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow right here on Locked on SEC.